what has been revealed so far is a mafia-style crime syndicate in charge of this sport. My only hesitation in using that term is that it is almost insulting to the mafia. U.S. soccer was one of the national associations which nominated Prince Ali and then publicly supported his challenge to FIFA's longstanding president, Mr. Sepp Blatter, in the recent election. We did so notwithstanding the political potential political risk, including the potential impact on our possible bid to host the 2026 Men's World Cup. The 2022 FIFA World Cup has brought into global focus the shocking conditions that are routine for migrant workers in Qatar. Under Qatar's Kafala employment sponsorship system, foreign migrant workers cannot change employers or leave Qatar without the permission of their current employer. Even if an employer is not paying the employee, the employer can still block the employee from changing jobs or leaving the country. Now look, I'd like to join with everybody else in honoring America's uh, soccer players and the gracious way they and the other 23 teams conducted themselves at the Women's World Cup. And this contrasts sadly with the massive, massive deficiencies of the US Soccer Federation, frightened to upset President Blatter's corrupt FIFA while enjoying the elite lifestyle that he provides. At the end of the day, when FIFA made a decision to grant the bid for the 2022 World Cup to occur in Qatar, it took responsibility for the human rights impacts of that decision. How can you say that? Why, why is that true? Because FIFA, as an international organization with a billion dollars plus in reserves, uh, has a responsibility under UN principles to ensure that its operations do not turn a blind eye to or directly involve serious human rights abuses. And it's pretty clear that human rights abuses uh, and labor exploitation are rampant in Qatar today. Blatter's FIFA ticks all the boxes defining an organized crime syndicate, seizing and holding power, massive stealing, running rackets, compromising and outwitting the public authorities, and hiding their criminality behind the world's most popular game. After seven years of probing these sleaze bags and putting up with their legal threats and their attacks on my computers, I was invited to meet FBI special agents in London. Their business cards said, organized crime. I wasn't alone anymore. The real people had arrived. In August 2011, I gave them financial and other documents uh, about America, that, that America's Chuck Blazer had hid from the fans and the public. US soccer had to know that Blazer and his fellow crook Jack Warner from Trinidad, you know, fighting extradition at the moment, with the approval of Blatter, were looting regional football and evading rightful taxes. But they looked away. As a fan, as well as a public official, as a parent, uh, let me just suggest that sometimes inaction and silence signal complicity. And there'll be a point where, in effect, U.S. soccer is complicit in the ongoing lack of reformer action. When the rest of the world has been categorizing, listing corruption at FIFA and at CONCACAF, and documented, the sponsors have said, oh, well, we, we only support the World Cup, we don't support FIFA. Well, isn't that tough and brave of them? We want absolutely the best for U.S. soccer. I think the point I would make is that we can't tolerate the status quo uh, and that there are serious consequences uh, from that uh, status quo. They're real and uh, in some instances uh, life-threatening or perhaps life-taking.